continuing our coverage right now of the Israel Hamas war live picture here out of southern Israel looking into Gaza and there is a lot to get to from hostage negotiations to the fighting in Gaza we want to bring in right now Israeli Defense Forces spokesperson Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner he joins us now Lieutenant Lerner thanks so much for coming on this evening we really appreciate it Alexi Let's first just begin with the latest in the Israeli offensive. Um, we are continuing our efforts against Hamas, dismantling and destroying them step by step, making sure that they never have the power to launch such a brutal attack as they did on October 7th. I can report this evening that we are um, extensively operating in the areas of Darj Tufakh in the northern Gaza Strip. Uh, we've completed much of our efforts and our um, I would say shifting to a lower intensity in the north in some of the other areas where we've completed the major efforts. But we are, I would say, tearing back piece by piece, stage by stage, tunnel by tunnel, Hamas's capabilities uh, throughout the Gaza Strip. The operations in the south in Khan Yunus are also ongoing, and we will continue to operate and we will expand our efforts in, all, in other places as well. What about the death toll in Gaza? It's being reported that it crossed 20,000 yesterday. Is that an accurate number? So this is the Hamas Ministry of Health that is putting out. I don't trust anything Hamas has to say, uh, whether it's their Ministry of Health or their Ministry of Death. From our perspective, uh, every civilian death in this uh, war is a tragedy, a tragedy nevertheless that lies on the shoulders of Hamas because they launched this war against us. And they created a reality which we can't ignore. We are, cannot be expected not to defend our civilians because Hamas have chosen strategically uh, as their concept of operations to place all of their terrorist assets in the civilian arena. They have weaponized the civilian arena. Yeah, we've heard a lot of that, uh, not knowing if those numbers are accurate coming out of the Palestinian Ministry of Health. Does IDF have a better idea of what that number might be? So our estimates suggest that there are several thousands of Hamas terrorists that have been killed in our exchanges, in our battles, in our strategic um, efforts to dismantle Hamas, in our precision strikes against their assets, their leaders from their battalion commanders, their, their brigade commanders, and the fighters. And it is a, a very substantial force. And of course, every day that goes by, we're engaging them more and more on the ground and defeating them on the battleground wherever they are. We saw a report on Fox News that the Israeli defense minister said that the leader of Hamas in the Gaza Strip will, quote, meet the barrels of our guns soon. How close is the IDF to Hamas leadership? So, of course, the the, the prime minister of Hamas, the, um, uh, the leader of this terrorist entity, his name is Yechia Sinwar. He has and he is the mastermind of the massacre of the 7th of October. Uh, we will get to him, however long it will take. Um, I would say that the, this operation, this war, the efforts, we're utilizing all of our capabilities, intelligence and operational capabilities. And I would say, you know, that the noose is closing around his neck. And I want to ask you, too, you mentioned just a few moments ago the uh, tunnel system in Gaza. I want to pull up this video posted by IDF on X. Obviously, we've seen this video that's been shared, a canine that was running through another tunnel. Has the IDF found all of the major tunnels, do you think? Or how many more do you believe there could be under Gaza? Uh, they have hundreds and hundreds of kilometers of tunnels that they've built over the last 16 years precisely for this war effort that they've uh, established. The attacks that were, t that were conducted on the 7th of October were managed and, and controlled from this tunnel system, from the safe houses that ha they have beneath the ground in the different locations. So we are dismantling them, destroying them. One of the tunnels that, that, that uh, we published today, we destroyed with 13 tons of explosives. Um, of course, there is much more and we have um, uh, have to be patient. It, it, dismantling this tunnel system is a very timely task, and we have to do it um, because we can't let them think that they have this advantage ever again. Uh, the reality, of course, Lexi, is that Hamas thought that the tunnel system would be would give them an advantage in the battleground. I would say this tunnel system is becoming more and more. It's more and more apparent that it is actually a death trap, not a place that they continue to live. 
Yeah, those uh, videos and images that you guys have continued to share have been really eye-opening to see. I also want to pull up uh, another statement from Accesses with Live Now's Josh Breslis, who I believe you have spoken with before. But we've been reporting today on the American Israeli who died in Hamas captivity. Can you tell us anything more about this individual, Gadi Haggai? Uh, our intelligence suggests that he's, he was killed in, in captivity uh, by Hamas. Um, I can't really elaborate beyond that. It's just one of the tragedies, one of the tragic stories of the 240 Israelis and foreign nationals that were abducted on that terrible day of the 7th of October. Um, their families, of course, are torn to pieces. Um, uh, and, and Gadi Haggai is just one more of those stories. It's a very, very sad reality of this conflict. Today, there are still 128 hostages being held by Hamas. Um, it is the reason, one of the reasons that we continue, continue our war effort. We are determined to bring them home, every last one of them. Yeah, so tragic. Anytime we get an update like this, the harsh reality of what's continuing to happen. And speaking of the hostages who are still in captivity, the big question still remains over the negotiations. And and I want to ask you, too, about the role that IDF has in this, or at least trying to advise the negotiators as this conversation continues. Uh, so we are utilizing all of our intelligence and operational capabilities in order to create the operational opportunity to act and bring home the hostages. Um, this is in parallel to the efforts to conduct uh, negotiations in order to bring them home um, uh, by alternate means. Um, we did, in the last week of November, hold our fire, potentially putting ourselves at risk in order to enable the deal, a, 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 a operational pause, in order to bring home 110 hostages. 86 of those were Israeli and uh, uh, 24 were foreign nationals, most, mostly Thai. So as we move forward in our operations on the ground, there is the activity that is taking place indeed in the diplomatic arena in order to try and create the circumstances to bring back everyone else. Uh, of course, from our perspective, we understand um, that Hamas will only negotiate when they feel that they have no choice. And that situation will only... Um, come out of our military force and the pressure that they, are, they will be under. Yeah, and switching our attention now to northern Israel, how is the fighting on that front in regards to Hezbollah and Lebanon? Hezbollah are treading a very, I would say, very, very fine ice. Uh, over the last two and a half months, um, they have almost every day been escalating their attacks against us, uh, contact, conducting attacks with anti-tank guided missiles, uh, killing Israelis, killing soldiers, killing civilians. Uh, they have attempted a couple of times to infiltrate into Israel. They've launched rockets and uh, um, and and drones, drone capabilities into Israel. Um, we are on a defensive posture in principle, but of course conducting preemptive strikes against the enemy, against Hezbollah, and also um, uh, responding when there are any attacks against us. We are, I think, the the most important message that I can say is, first of all, to Hezbollah, look very carefully how Hamas is paying a very dear price for judging us and, and making a very dire mistake when they attacked us on the 7th of October. And also to the government of Lebanon, they need to take control of, um, of Hezbollah and make sure that they do not attack us. Lebanon will pay a very dear price as well if this situation deteriorates further. And it's also important, I think, though, to remember, though, Hezbollah isn't independently operating. Hezbollah, like the Houthis from Yemen, are acting at the beck and call of Iran. Iran is pulling the strings, make, trying to divert our attention away from Hamas in the Gaza Strip. And this is why we are seeing an increase in tensions and, and aggression against us from both North and South. Yeah, and you just mentioned the Houthi rebels. I wanted to ask you about that, too, the attacks on commercial vessels. What else can you say about what the IDF is monitoring there? So the Houthis are a threat to stability, not only in Israel, but as you pointed out, uh, the naval routes. And, and as we see, they've conducted uh, attacks and hijacked um, uh, ships as well. Um, they are a threat to uh, peace in the region and beyond. Uh, they need to be dealt with. From our perspective, we have uh, lo lots of capabilities, but we, we, be we believe that as an international threat, it should be 
challenged by the international efforts. And we see that happening now with the, the US uh, and the coalition that US has brought around to get together in that. From our perspective, when uh, the Houthis are launching uh, cruise missiles towards Israel, then we're taking our defensive uh, aerial defense capabilities and we're meeting that threat every single time. Lieutenant Lerner, we can't say enough how much we appreciate you coming on this evening. Is there anything else that you would like to share with us about uh, anything involving the war? Obviously, to be able to speak with you and to get direct insight from the IDF is so important to us and to our viewers who are listening. Lexi, we are coming into the holiday season. Uh, we all hope that this holiday will bring, bring peace. Unfortunately, the neighbors here, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, they don't have any intention on giving us in the region any peace. We need to be strong. We intend on being strong. And we, we intend on restoring safety and security to the, to the people of Israel. Uh, that's our obligation, and that is what we will do. IDF spokesperson, Lieutenant Colonel Peter Lerner, joining us here on Live Now from Fox. Lieutenant Lerner, thank you so much for your time this evening. We'll be talking with you soon, and continue to stay safe. Thanks so much. Thank you, Lexi.